All right, guys, so this is going to be the welder that we're going to be doing the demo on gas metal arc welding today. But I want to talk to you a little bit about what welder is going to be best for you. I get this question asked often, and I kind of want to share with you how I go about finding welders throughout the job site and figuring out what welder is best for me. In this demo, we've already decided that gas metal arc welding was going to be the process that we were going to use to stick two pieces of metal together. So those pieces of metal are going to be eighth inch in, in thickness. So I, what I would do is I pull up a gauge like this and I would measure the material and let's say they were both eighth inch. Right there, you'll see it is 125 wall. Well, the tubing that I'm going to be welding is the 120 wall right here and an eighth inch flat stock. So I would go up to that welder and I would pull the cover up and I would say, okay, well, this is a 110 volt welder and he has settings for carbon steel, 7525. Um, he has settings for eighth inch of material. So I know this machine will get best penetration for gas metal arc welding up to a eighth inch gauge or 120 wall material, 11 gauge. Anything after that, they don't have settings for. Now you can still weld up above the eighth inch into thicker material but the problem is is that it's not going to give you the best penetration because of the output of this welder so definitely go by the welding guides when choosing a welder all right so i want to take the flux core roll out and do a quick changeover i'm going to go ahead and cut the wire here and then i'm going to find the hole usually there's a hole on the roll go ahead and just pull it like that so i don't lose it and then slip it off We'll go ahead and set on our new roll. And I'm just gonna make sure it's gonna seat right into there, just like that. And then our left-handed nut, perfect. And then our new wire. But before that, I'm gonna open up the drive roller and pull out the old wire here. But I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it out from the torch side of things because it's just gonna be pretty, a lot simpler in this case. Now I like to do this with a fresh cut. And then we'll go ahead and feed the wire through the guide. And then into the liner until it stops, close the drive roller, and then back out the tension. I like to back out the tension. Now as you can already see, I've already swapped the polarity for DCEP. Um, that's going to be torch on the positive side, ground clamp on the negative side, electrode positive. And that is going to be indicated right here on the guide. So it's pretty simple to get all this switched over. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my machine. Now I'm going to do the glove check. So it looks like I need more tension because the roll is slipping. And that's a pretty good resistance there. I like that setting there. I'm going to leave it like that. All right, guys, so this is the cylinder I use. It is 7525 argon carbon dioxide mix, 7525. And what I usually do is when I first get this all set up, I'll um, basically strap the cylinder to or chain it to the cart. That way it can't fall. And then um, I'll remove this cap that it usually comes with when you get it from the uh, supplier. Now for about a hundred bucks a year, I can rent this tank and then about 30 to $40 every time I need to swap it out. And it lasts me um, a good project. It'll, I'll get one cylinder out of a, a good project. So just keeping that in mind every time you do one or two projects, depending on the side, this, uh, you may have to either get a bigger tank or just continually swapping this one out. I've changed this one out three or four times in the past year and a half. So just keep that in mind as far as an additive cost. So once you undo the cap, you'll go ahead and attach your regulators. There's going to be two regulators. This one tells you what's going on in the tank, tank side pressure. And this one is your flow rate going out of the tank into the machine out of your torch. So the first thing we're going to do after it's set up like this, we'll open up the valve. Now you don't have to do it all the way. I just like to open it up. And as you can see on the right gauge here is the, uh, I'm just under 500 PSI. So I'm, I am actually pretty low as far as, as gas right now. I do need to swap this out, but this should be enough. 
and then on this side the flow rate now i like to go between 20 to 30 psi but it's more like 15 to 20 15 to 30 somewhere in there you got to find the sweet spot we'll talk more about that later on but uh, i'm just going to go ahead and leave it at 25 and uh, we'll go into the next step. So that's pretty much with the gas regular. Uh, then you, need, you will need a hose and then you'll have to attach that on the back of the welder. Gas is making its way from the cylinder through the machine, through a regulator, and then over here um, through the torch and then out these holes, as you can see those four holes right there, that is called the diffuser. And then we would need to add a gas nozzle. Basically that nozzle covers the electrode, the contact tip, and it allows a laminar flow of gas to shield the weld puddle. So that's one other thing that we'll have to do when we switch from flux core over to gas. All right, so like I was saying in the last video and earlier on in this video, the limitations of the welder has a guide and that guide is basically for gas metal arc welding. My welder can only weld up to eighth inch stock. Now there is a gauge that usually comes with most welders. This one's by uh, Miller and then we can go on here and look up eighth inch stock and then if it passes it's good so it's going to be too loose for the 10 but it won't fit the 14 so it's going to be eighth inch stock and that's going to be the limitation for this welder so I've already done a weld with the 3 16 inch weld and as you can see that the weld is more um, convex um, the the width is is good but as you can see it's not washing in well to both sides of the material bridging the gap and this would be considered more like a cold weld where there's not a lot of penetration here so that's the effect of welding a, on thicker material um, outside of the limitations the maximum limitations of the welder so now we're going to step it down to eighth inch i've got my welder set to four the highest setting for eighth inch and then the recommended wire speed is 40. Now with the wire speed, you can turn it down or up. You can kind of mess with that to get the best results while you're welding. But for the most part, I would start with what the machine recommends and then tweak it a little bit here and there based on the appearances of the weld. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the, the welder. And I already have the voltage set to four and I'm gonna turn it up to 40 on the wire speed. Now, if you watched the previous video with the flux core uh, welding process, you would recognize these two parts. I've already got them cleaned really well and wiped down with a solvent to clean any oils or anything like that. And again, I'll say it here, if it's worth welding, it's definitely gonna be worth cleaning. So I've got my parts cleaned up really well. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up as a T-joint in the horizontal position like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my magnet so we'll go ahead and weld it up just like this now there's going to be three techniques i want to offer you just as i was saying in the last video for flux core um, we're going to be watching our um, our stick out or the arc gap between the contact tip and the base material a good stick out position is going to be somewhere between quarter to a half of an inch stick out and then our angle of the torch is going to be the second tip and basically it's gonna be 45 from the flat, 45. And then our um, torch, we're going to tip that in to about five to 15 degrees. And we're gonna keep that very consistent going across. The distance away from the material and the, and the angle of the torch, all right? And now the speed is determined based on the weld puddle. So once you create the arc gap, um, and we form really quickly, you will form the weld puddle. And then once the width of that weld puddle is formed, then you can slowly start to consistently bring that puddle towards the end of the workpiece or the material. And that will dictate the width of the weld bead. It's very important that we get the width of the weld bead to match very closely to the thickness of the stock. And we want, once we establish that at the weld puddle, the travel speed will determine how fast we're going to bring that from start to finish. All right, so the first pass, I like to spray some of this on my contact tips. That way it helps prevent uh, material sticking to it. It keeps it clean and it prolongs the life of the contact tip. So I'm gonna use this stuff, it's called anti-spatter. Can't use enough of it, it's really good stuff. Once this is hot, the nozzle is hot, 
Um, I, I like to dip it in some of this nozzle dip. So I'll have this open, ready to go. And I'm gonna set up my ground clamp right there onto a good uh, steel table for ground. The fourth technique I'm gonna offer is motion control. And that motion control is helping bridging the gap between workpiece to workpiece, sticking the pieces two together, forming a really nice um, weld bead. Here, as you can see, it's got really good penetration there. You can see the heat is all, went all the way through the base material. As far as the weld goes, you can see it has good a good bridge between both pieces of material going from the bottom to the 90. Um, it doesn't look like it's uh, very convex. It's, it's kind of concaved. Um, as you can see, I could probably um, speed up my travel speed to kind of correct that or what I can do is maybe turn down the wire speed. If I turn down the wire speed, I'll have less wire, meaning less heat. If I were to turn up the wire speed, I would have more wire but more heat to burn that wire but the problem with that is then i would have to change my travel speed to affect that and that could also affect the penetration of the weld so there's so many different variables going on during the welding process as a welder you're going to have to learn these little techniques and to kind of overcome that for the best results so i'm going to go ahead and turn down the wire speed and we'll see what happens over here i might have to change my travel speed but uh, let's just see what happens all right so there you have it that is the weld looking pretty good um, i actually like this one a lot better just by turning down the uh, wire speed i put less wire in there and i maintained pretty much the same travel speed but i could have probably made that better by traveling a little bit faster whereas this one we just did i maintained a good travel speed so you'll have to play with the different variables when considering welding with gas metal arc welding. The fourth variable here is motion. So on this one, I did add a little bit of motion. Um, I'd like to do more like a pig's tail, like a squiggly line, but you can do a back and forth and that helps draw the puddle into one side of the material to the other to help bridge the gap. So as you can see, this is, um, I would say this is an acceptable weld. Now, another tip that I would like to, to mention is get yourself comfortable. Comfort has a lot to do with the how steady your hand can be when making that pass. So just a couple tips and tricks. So when you start welding different positions, sometimes different techniques will be better than the other. This motion technique here is called the T motion, and I'm gonna be using it with some eighth inch flat stock and eighth inch, inch and a half tube. there you guys have it and that is the fourth trick to get some welds that look like this basically what what I'm doing is I establish the weld puddle and then once I get up there I'm gonna go up and a T come down back up over down back up over down back up over down back up over and I'm gonna continue that for the length of the weld and essentially what I get is this really pretty looking weld every time transformer is going to get hot because of the welds you want to let keep this on for maybe another 10 or 15 minutes after you're welding and then close your valve on the gas and then we'll purge out the rest of the gas in the liner and the machine so close the valve leave this on and then what you're going to do watch the needle on the regulator you can see both the needles dropped the valve is closed and then i'll back off my regulator to where it's closed and that's how you properly purge your welding machine. As you can see, this welder it can be very effective at uh, producing good welds and for different certain types of material. 
Um, we've gone over why it's important to choose the right welder for the job. We've gone over some techniques and then with the special techniques at the end of the video with the gas metal arc welding using that hand motion technique for really pretty welds. Other than that, I think um, we've pretty much worked all our way up through flux core into gas metal arc welding and I think this is going to be a pretty good two-part series where we've covered a lot of basic techniques and fundamentals of uh, flux core and gas metal arc welding using this MIG welder. Uh, so without further ado, I think we're going to end the video here. If you guys like the video, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, consider subscribing helps with the channel if you're new and we'll see you guys on the next video. Have a good day. Peace out.